What's back a lacking guys? I'm a duck quack here and welcome back to another episode on our trading series that we're doing. So we're going to cover another easy enough trading option here and it's going to be sniping. Now the basis of sniping, it works around picking a player, group of players or something on the transfer market, setting a price that is lower than what they currently sell for, then refreshing the search filters until one pops up and attempting to buy it for cheaper, allowing you to instantly relist it on the market for a profit. Now, before we get into it, there's a couple of things that we need to talk about. The first is to remember EA tax. So whenever you sell a player, you're going to be taxed 5%. The easiest way to work out how much you'll receive after selling them is to do the amount you sell them for times 0.95. That will give you your amount after tax. So that's the very first thing to remember. Include it in your calculations when you set price filters. Now, when people think about sniping, Say they've got about a million coins. They'll pick someone huge. They'll pick someone like Dybala, who I think goes for about 300,000 coins, give or take. He is. So we can instantly sell him for about 290. So we want to start trying to snipe him at around 270,000 coins. Every time we search, we could come back out and search again. Now, if we do it like this, it's not resetting the search filters. So it's not re refreshing the search results we get. To get around this, we want to change the max price to the top and then search and then drop it down one and search and rinse and repeat. This ensures that your search is being refreshed every time you try it and hence you'll get any new results pop up as soon as you hit search. The problem I have with going for big players like Dybala or like Kante or like Martial or anyone huge is everybody's going to be thinking about trying that and the frequency in which they're listed on the market is so slim compared to other players that firstly, you've got to be on at the time someone mislists this player or lists it for cheap, and then you have to beat the other competition. Yes, it could be a big win when you get one, but the chances of getting one are so slim. The best methods are used around smaller players, a couple of thousand coin players up to about 10,000 coin players. And we'll use Bakayoko as an example here. Now, Bakayoko is a Chelsea CDM and my controller is not liking me right now, who sells for roughly, I think it's about 11,000 coins. A bit more than 11,000 coins. He sells for 11,500 coins instantly. So what we want to be doing is setting our search filter to about 10,500, and then making sure we drop down this max price every time we search, and just continuing to do this as long as it takes till we get lucky enough to find a player pop up and then hopefully win it for a bit of profit. Oh, we got one already. I can't buy them. I haven't got the coins, but you can see how easy it is and how much more frequently they're going to show up with a player of this kind of stature. Now, we need to remember that times when the market is another one as well. So you guys get the gist of how it works now. We need to think about how the amount of players playing the game and the amount of packs being opened can directly affect how successful sniping is. So if I'm sniping in the middle of the night when barely anyone's playing, we're not going to get many search results. But if I'm sniping when packs are being opened, so there's a big event just released, an SBC that gives you packs, weekend league rewards, squad battle rewards, anything like that, the effectiveness of this method is just going to be much, much stronger. And hence, we're going to get a lot more hits and a lot more potential to win these players. Now, while I love sniping players like Bakayoko, there are ways we can make this so much better without any work. So we've got to think about it realistically. Bakayoko is a Chelsea player. So he's in the Premier League. He plays for Chelsea, like we mentioned. Let's put Chelsea on there. He's a gold rarity player. And we want to snipe him for 10,500. So we've got some new search filters set up there. Whoops, I forgot to put the one key component on there. He's also French. So we've got a new search filter set up. Now, why is this better than sniping Bakayoko on his own? Well, it's a very obvious reason. We have not only Bakayoko, but we also have Kante fall into this range. Yes, the chances of anyone, I don't know if it's possible, he's probably got a price range above it, but this is an example to give you guys the idea of how it works. If someone were to list a Kante for 10,000 coins, he would fall into our Bakayoko snipe range and we'd pick him up. It's the tiniest chance anything like this could happen, but why would you limit yourselves and remove the opportunity that you have from sniping when you can do it with basically the same search filters you're using anyway? Another basic scenario would be if we think about Liverpool as an example. Say the cheapest English player as an example was James Milner. He was a thousand coins. If we searched Milner, we'd sure, we'd get loads of hits. But if we search for England, gold, Liverpool, then we would be getting Lalana, Henderson, Sturridge also showing in these search results, and hence it would be a lot more profitable. 
Obviously, that doesn't work because there's loads of other English gold uh, Liverpool players, but it's an example to show you what I mean. That covers the way to most effectively change your sniping methods to ensure that they're working to the maximum potential they can. Now we're going to have a little look at something a little bit different. So, we can obviously snipe players any time of the day, but SBCs are something that has changed the sniping market completely. What we need to do is try and find here where the marquee matchups SBC is. There it is. So, marquee matchups is the example I'm going to go with, but this works for almost any SBC that has certain requirements. Whenever they're released, the demand for the players included or needed goes up massively, and that's because people want to complete the SBC. It makes a lot of sense. So if we have a look at the requirements here, the first one is any four players from the RSL. That's not particularly hard to do. We've got the Panathinaikos against Olympiakos, one player from both teams. That's not overly hard to do. The Seville against CD Leganes, three players between the two clubs. That's probably the best one to snipe pair. The most players are needed, hence it's the hardest to achieve. So marquee matchups came out, yes, two days ago, actually. So the prices have probably dropped a bit already. But I'm hoping they're a little bit inflated so we can at least get the point across here. So if we set this to gold, uh, they've already come right back down. Not quite to discard, though. So a couple of days ago, these players would have easily been discard. Now they're going for 1,100 coins instantly. So we want to be sniping them at about 950 and then just recession the, resetting the search filter. Because it's been a while now, we're not going to make massive amounts of profit off this filter, but it shows you exactly how it works when a new SBC drops and how we can use it to our advantage. You can see here that almost every search I'm having at the moment is giving us a player. Well, it was until I mentioned it, and then obviously we were massively jinxed and then no players decided to show up for a while. But any SBC that drops that requires a lot of players or requires the market to change and people to need a lot more players from these clubs is going to affect the market. And that's when our sniping potential comes in good again. And it's easy filters. They're filters you don't have to ask for. Look at the SBC. Look at the player prices. Find out a cheaper price. Remember tax. Snipe. Instantly sell for profit. And the reason we instantly want to sell these guys for profit and not wait for the extra 100 coins is because we don't know when the demand could start to drop. So say we were sniping in the first hour and we held all the players. A load of people have completed the SBC by then. The demand might start to drop and it might fall a little bit low below what we were sniping for and hence we lose out. That's why with sniping, unless it's a premium player that we get lucky with, I always prefer to take that quick profit and then move on to the next snipe and just rinse and repeat. Now, consumables, almost impossible to snipe because contract fitness and everything fall into the same category. So there's single and there's group and there's rare gold and there's non-rare gold contracts. It just becomes a whole heap of mess. You can obviously snipe chemistry styles, position changes. You have limitless options when it comes to sniping. It just all depends what you feel most comfortable with. This is more a tutorial on how we should be looking at choosing the sniping filters, the pricing we should be going for, and just the fundamentals of how it works. If you're using a strong sniping filter, but after an SBC drops usually, it's not impossible to make anywhere up to about 50,000 coins an hour. you just got to start on it as soon as you find it. And if there's a lot of competition, find a new one. Anyway, guys, going to wrap up the video there. So I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this series, and I'm hoping a lot of you who are new to trading are finding these useful. If you are liking it, make sure you drop that like, guys. Subscribe if you're new to the YouTube channel. That would be incredible. I've got my Twitter in the description, so make sure you follow us there because we're always tweeting out investment advice and all kinds of stuff. And we've also got a trading Discord that has over 2,000 members in, so make sure you join us on there. Everyone on there is super friendly and there's always someone to get advice off. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.